Hi and welcome to our video today about the newborn and the postpartum. So congratulations, you crossed the, uh, the marathon of the pregnancy, the iron woman of the delivery, which is something incredible. And the success is that your baby is alive. So congratulations, whatever you have to, be, to go through, uh, the victory is there and you can be proud of it. Now you enter another phase after this huge, huge um, effort, concentration of a passing of yourself. You are ready to cross the ocean of the newborn life and the postpartum. It's an ocean in a way that you will enter in the new wave of your hormonal life. Before the level of your oxytocin was quite steady, with a high at the delivery. But now you are going to have a, a cycle which is like a roller coaster with uh, some high of oxytocin when you breastfeed, some very low after it. And um, the, the prolactin, um, other hormone, hormones linked to uh, breastfeeding are going to be involved. You will have to recover from the delivery. Usually we say that it takes nine months to recover just of the effort of the delivery. You will have to recover for your pelvic floor if you have tears just the tiredness, just the big opening, many things that could have happened, hemorrhage or other things. Um, you will have to recover of um, eventually the lack of, uh, the lack of sleeping during the period of the delivery. Many things are there together and suddenly you have a newborn who needs you 150% every second. So it seems a bit unfair. Some women really react like, um, um, uh, like really become rebel to that. You could have very irrational reaction. Some women have left the, the home for 12 hours, 24, 72 hours, quit everybody, the husband, the baby, everything, and we, nobody can find them and they come back a bit later just to know that you could have very irrational reaction to these moments. Like if you, you have a rebellion that, my God, I made so much and now have, plus I have all that, wow. I can take it. It's completely normal, even physiological, to avoid that or to minimize it, because after that you have to live with a kind of guiltness if it's happened to you. It's very important to have a strategy. That's why we do this video today. About the strategy, some things are very important to, to manage. You enter in this big journey on the ocean of that, you have to live like a sailor. You have to have many nap, very short nap, many meals, not just during the day, but many, many. Hey, better to do short one, but very often to never be in hypoglycemia. You need to have uh, resting. You need to so sleep when you baby sleep. You need to have outdoors to regenerate yourself. But you have, you need to have eventually indoors, in inside you, moment where you could reconnect with yourself because being completely dedicated to the baby, which is now outside you, which demand, who demand you everything, you could completely lose yourself. And it's true, you are going to give more again your body, more again your breast, your, your head, your, your thought, your emotion. Everything is turned towards this baby that now need your attention consciously. Inside, there was, all the process was inside, it was a bit automatic. Now it will be you involved constantly. And that is a completely new learning for you. This learning is amazing because in the meantime, you are going to learn what, which is the most difficult quality to learn in life, which is vigilance and commitment. The two things which are the more difficult. We know, according to research in, in neuroscience, that the level of happiness ex exactly the proportion of your level of commitments and presence in everything. Presence means attention, vigilance. So your baby is there to learn you that. When you pass this test, you will be a happy person for the rest of your life, thanks to this learning with your baby. So it's something to welcome instead to fight against, because it won't stop. And in the meantime, to, when you understand it's a privilege to learn this quality, which is one of the most difficult to learn in life, and you take it either for your inner life, it's become a blessing. And, but a blessing that has a cost. And a cost, it's like really an initiation. You are going to, to learn something which is the most difficult to learn. And if you take it really at this level, you are going to approach it like um, an intense, 
period of your life. For that you need support. And this, we, we enter in the first things of your partner. Uh, one thing which is so important to create oxytocin endorphins is massage. To be massaged every day would be something wonderful. In the past, woman after delivery was massaged every day for nine months. It seems like a dream for today, but uh, at least to have that for a month with your partner, with friends, either with professional that can massage you, either if it's just five minutes, your head, your feet, your back, just that, your hands, any massage will help you to restabilize this level of oxytocin that you lose since the baby is no longer in your womb and to stabilize your mood. The other thing is to use the skin to skin with your baby. Nothing is more important than to skin to skin because it's a moment with this reconnection where you regenerate this level of endorphins with you. Plus it's it gives to the baby a level of security which is so amazing. To carry your baby. When you carry your baby in a carrier on you, we know that it's remembered to the baby inside the womb and so it gives landmark. It's helped the baby to learn gradually the new world, not to be just in gravity on, on something, but we we um, reconnect with what he knows and uh, be able to console him of the distress of the unknown. On the other hand, the importance of the breastfeeding. Breastfeeding is most of the time not something natural for most of women. It's crazy, but it's like that. Delivery is much more natural for most of women, either if we do a lot of training for that, but breastfeeding is crazy. It's just a few percent of women that got it like that. Most of the time, you're so irritated to realize that you don't get it, that the baby hurt you, that you, you, your nipple is going to broke, that you could have infection, that you could have, uh, you see your baby losing weight because you're not able to, um, to breastfeed him properly, so you have temptation to supply him, which is really not a good idea. Why it's not a good idea? We know now that the, 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 the nipple has a receptor. Each time the baby sucks you, you analyze in his mouth all his need. It's like a la uh, an inner lab that you have on you. It's so brilliant. And the breast is able to warm if the baby is cold in less than a few seconds. Or to cold the completely the breast to if the baby has fever, to help the baby to release from its, fever, from its his or her fever. But in the meantime, more than that, each time the baby sucks the, the nipple, there is analyze of the need, uh, of the physiological need of the baby. And you, in, your body, in your body, you are going to take all the minerals, vitamins, elements the baby needs in, 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 in a matter of seconds. And your baby can have uh, the best healer or the, or the best things to help him to be healthy and take weight and all that. So this is so important to, to give uh, attention to the breastfeeding. It's not just a question of cosmetic and, and um, or I don't know, intellectual uh, consideration that sometimes there is belief system and that uh, push the mother to not do it. But please take help to, to keep your breast beautiful. If you're uh, afraid of that, there is massage, there is many things to, to do to avoid the distension of the breast, to keep nice breast later. Uh, <clears throat> there is, you could use cold and, 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 and heat and hot to create this uh, dilatation of the tissue in a good way. Uh, I try to find arguments to help you, to, in, in, uh, to invite you, inspire you to use these uh, wonderful things. And plus, we have discovered that the, the mother milk has the highest level of stem cells that are so important for the baby to continue the development of mainly the brain, but all the tissue that continue to be developed in the first three months, in a very, very big amount, for example, the lungs, the brains, and other organs in the body that are very, very precious. So these stem cells are so am amazing to have and you don't have when you take a ma maternized milk or, um, or other stuff that you could use to supply the baby. So this is, and please, if you don't, if you have difficulty, don't wait. Immediately call your midwife, your doula, or your consultant in lactation. They are amazing person that will help you in few minutes of explanation to get it and, and win this battle could be really uh, uh, hard for you. And uh, so dare to ask is very, very, very normal. Um, on the other hand, some um, habits that are very important for you is to, um, to, un to protect your environment for your baby in the, mainly the first months. In um, 
a lot of culture in India and in many countries still. The people put a red flag or a red um, lasse um, that they put, a, a ribbon that they put on the door to inform people, oh, there is a newborn. And people won't go in this, in this house until the, the ribbon is get out. Um, this uh, custom, in fact, is now we understand why. Because, as uh, we said before, during the pregnancy, the baby develops certain programmation. The baby reads you and prepare itself to survive to all the type of stress you have um, exposed the baby through you. And so the, and there is transgenerational information that the baby develop programmation to survive to his family, to his mother or his or her mother, uh, father, family and, and environment. But this program are going to be activated in the f specifically in the first month, the first three months of the, the life. And this programmation I'd like for the first breathing, the first inspire. As soon as the baby go out, you have some time, you need sometimes the first um, inspire is not natural and you have to rub a bit the back of the baby or do a few clappings or eventually re remove um, some um, uh, water in the liquid in the mouth to help him. But the first inspire will activate all the neurology of the lung. Um, the baby is going to suck, to to smell and during the first days and, and weeks the baby is going to trigger the breathing, the smelling which are very very important. Most of his brain is dedicated to, to make working this area of his body. 80% of the brain will work just for this area and of course he has to, to learn to eat and um, but there is other things like when the baby move with the gravity, proprioception, gravity, all that trigger his nervous his or her nervous system. So this period of um, connection makes that his brain or her brain is so open. The brain is not locked because this setting, this activation of the programmation is made during the first months, three months. During this time, the brain is so open that it's like a sponge. Every vibration, emanation, emotions, either thoughts around the baby, he grabs them. And the baby can overreact when someone is mad against, if people move strongly, if there is hard music, if there is any senses that make the, the baby uh, scary because the his system is not yet activated. So it's like a shock, literally like a whiplash for the baby. That's for this reason that it's so important to avoid bring your baby in a, in a commercial center or with stranger or either to welcome all your friends. This is not the moment. Please wait a month, three weeks at least. For the family, for, for uh, the close family, very close friend, it's another story because this is part of your and direct environment. So the baby knew it, and people usually it's people who are very careful. So it's not a big. Uh, it's it's good to share that with your close family. But please wait a little a little time, few weeks before presenting the baby, doing baby showers and stuff like that. Because either when you do it, use soft music, soft light. It's gradual. He comes from another world, and he has to uh, adapt to this new world, which is the gravity, which is the light, which is the cold, the heat, and all that, and all the senses. So, um, what is uh, so important too at this moment is to have this um, communication with your baby, to learn to, exp to continue to, to talk with the baby of anything happened to you, and uh, um, there is some um, importance to and to, to be ready that um, you have this mood and uh, as I said one of the best things is to massage you but in meantime to massage the baby is the in etology the, the studying of animals we know that all mammals tend to bite the skin of the baby and to lick it and when we observe it closely we see that 80 percent of the biting and the licking are on the head and of course on a human being, the baby receives around 10 tons of pressure going through the channel, the vaginal channel, and so more or less for other animals. So it's like instinctual that, to, that animals are going to massage by licking and, and beating the, the head mainly of the baby. In the past, until the tw twen um, twen in the at the end of the 90th centuries, uh, before the uh, Industrial Revolution. All the mother, all in all the world, was teaching their mother to massage the head of the baby and and the body. Today we have lost this uh, wonderful um, 
uh, habits. And uh, we, so if you don't dare to do it because you're afraid of fontanelle and all that, the fontanelle is fragile if you put something directly in it. But if you massage around, everything is so... Um, it's, uh, you, can, you can do massage very simple. Me, I like to learn that. It's like you tremble the, uh, you tremble the earth. You can move. It's like the water. You move the skin on the on the skull. You you massage like that very lightly. That this is the air. And after that, you take the air when there is some hairs, and you pull them. This is a fire. So I use a four element like a landmark to help you be, to, to massage your baby. You can do that ten times a day. Ah, it will make like a breathing, a release on all the skull and all the spine of the baby. If you can do that, please bring your baby to an osteopath. Either if you can do that, bring it to an osteopath. They are amazing before the th third month, before you have a growing, a big growing of the cervicals, and the, the, the skull is going to lock. You can help a lot your baby to avoid colicies, to avoid um, regurgitation, um, bronchitis, and many, many things, bronchiolitis. You can help many, many little things that happen by releasing this tension in the head because sometimes you have pressure during the pregnancy, but most of the time before, uh, be, uh, pressure during the delivery, but most of the time during the pregnancy, so the, the baby uses uh, the head to push and to help mommy doing pressure on certain organs. So you have certain pressure that could create dysplasia, like a torsion in the head or flat, flat head, different things. All that we are going to develop on other capsules about specifically the, the newborn and the postpartum. But already uh, it's a good thing to, to know that massaging, using the service of an osteopath, certain chiropractors, certain massage therapists know how to do on babies. They have been trained for that. Please use the service, it's very precious. And um, it's important to avoid postpartum depression too, to take a lot of omega-3. Because omega-3 helps you to redo all what the baby takes to do the brain. And in the meantime, with the level of the new rhythm, like the sailor rhythm, you need to be very fit in omega-3 to, to go through these moments. And um, so, um, yes. So roughly, this is the main thing I wish to show to you. Um, there is many books that you can find, and you can find something which is very interesting. It's Dunstan Method. You can find it on the website prenataleducation.org, and you can see this method of a singer, which is amazing to learn the need of your baby. It's four songs to learn, well, five in fact, where you can know if the baby uh, is hungry, need uh, uh, to be uh, moved, or need to sleep or any other uh, need of the baby. It's very simple to learn and it can be very helpful. So um, there is um, many other subjects on these moments because it could be a lot of strange things happening, pathology, that I wish to develop on other videos. Uh, but for now I hope that you will be comfortable to to be, go on internet to, to learn uh, important things that I have talked about to eventually dig on these things to find resources and accompany it that you have a wonderful um, starting and that you benefit this moment of so intense moment of your life that will develop you the root of the real happiness for all your life. Have a great day. Thank you.